Delivering the cue in this simple way could make you twice as accurate. But we're not talking about the angle of your cue arm or even how tightly you're gripping the cue. No, what this is all about is tension. That's because your muscles react like a spring. If they're overloaded, instead of delivering the cue normally, they can snap and suddenly release uncontrollably. But if the tension's too low, this can create a wobble and the slow speed can also prevent you potting the ball and cueing straight. It's far easier to deliver your cue in the right line if you're doing so at the right speed. To get the speed and therefore the tension right for the shot you're playing, you need to pull your cue back the right amount so the spring can deliver at the correct speed. This means you can play shots hard with a longer backswing and a slightly shorter backswing will allow you to keep the same tension when playing a shot slower. But if the back swings too short, then it creates too much tension because the cue has to accelerate really fast in a short space of time. If it's too long, then the cue is moving too slowly and there isn't enough tension which causes the cue to wobble. The correct distance will give you the cleanest, most accurate strike, but also greater control over the cue ball. So this is exactly what you need to do to get it right, but first we need to work out if you're getting it wrong. When you play a shot where the cue jumps up in the air, or possibly ends up on a different part of your bridge hand, you know you haven't pulled the cue back far enough. Now it could be that you're pulling your cue back as far as it'll go, but your bridge hand is just too close to the cue ball. So when you try and strike the cue ball with power, the cue is automatically going to jump up in the air. So what you want to do is bring your bridge hand back a little bit, and this effectively allows you to produce the same amount of power with less effort. And this can make you a lot more accurate. So what exactly causes you to miss when you try to generate a large amount of power in quite a small amount of space? Firstly, the cue jumping up in the air can cause you to lose sight of the object ball at the crucial moment. Secondly, this action is probably adding unwanted side spin to the cue ball. But most significantly, it adds too much tension. So instead of compressing and uncompressing in a smooth straight line, just like the spring, your muscles pop out of an angle as all this energy unloads. And you don't get that nice smooth delivery that allows you to cue the shot straight. Again, you'll know this is a problem if your cue's jumping up in the air at the end of your shot, or if you're struggling to pause at the end of your backswing. These are both signs you've got too much tension in your cue arm and you need to bring your bridge hand back a bit further and increase the distance of your backswing. And this will help you pot a lot more consistently. Although when you're playing a power shot, often there's nothing you can do about this. When you play a shot that's close to full power, or when you're close to the cushion, you'll probably find your cue is going to jump up in the air. However, if you've got the same problem when you're playing shots a lot slower than this, you could massively improve your cue action and your cue ball control by simply bringing your bridge hand back a little bit and increasing the distance of your backswing. But at the other end of the spectrum, you can lose control of the cue if you're not pushing it through with enough tension. Often you'll notice shots without enough tension don't reach the pocket, or possibly you don't quite get the same amount of spin on you intend to. These can in extreme cases also miss cue. It happens the most on touch control shots, often when you're trying to hold the cue ball and you simply can't generate the same amount of spin you want to at the slower speed. The solution to this isn't to decrease your bridge length, but to just slightly shorten your backswing distance. And this will mean you're playing the shot with a similar tension as a harder shot, and you should get a similar amount of spin. This is very helpful with touch control and break building situations. And if you're not pulling your cue back as far, there's less that can go wrong. Just make sure you're keeping it in the right window so that you've definitely not got too much tension that it might jump off your cue, but you're also not playing the shot so slowly that your cue isn't really going through in one smooth motion and you end up wobbling through the shot. 
It affects shots like this the most, where I've got to try and pot the black and hold position for the red. If I play this shot with a really long backswing, then there simply won't be the tension in my arm when I play the shot very slowly to try and hold for the red to generate any spin. And that means the cue ball's simply gonna run on and not hold up. To get the correct amount of tension in my arm, I need a shorter backswing, which means I'm gonna have more control when I play the shot and I can play it a lot slower and get more spin on the cue ball, holding for the red quite nicely there. So as long as there's enough tension in your cue arm, I believe you cue better when you're towards the longer, smoother end of the scale. Everybody will have their own speed that they feel most comfortable with, so it's important to practice to find yours. A great way to practice this, and I highly recommend doing it, because getting the tension right will both improve your potting and your confidence in it, is to simply set up a load of balls down the middle of the table between the black spot and the blue spot, and then to place the white about halfway between the distance of the object ball and the pocket. So we're roughly half that distance, we'll put the cue ball there, dead straight, and you simply want to play a stun shot where you get the tension right. So it gets to the pocket, my cue didn't jump up in the air, or I didn't play it too slowly. And then you can just do the same thing on the next shot, but this time it's going to be further away because the object ball is further from the pocket. So again, I want to have enough distance that I can play it smoothly, but without my cue jumping up in the air which would mean that your backswing isn't long enough, and if the cue ball runs on instead of stopping dead, then you know your backswing's too long. It doesn't matter if you miss, just put the balls back and try it again. This will eventually help you play shots with the correct tension, and it'll mean that you're just about twice as accurate when you strike these shots, because that's going in so easily, because there's very little wobble, either because I'm playing the shot too slowly, which I'm definitely not, or because I'm playing them too hard, and that's causing my arm to jump out of line. None of that's happening, and I'm potting a lot more consistently. And it's all about getting your cue arm to release energy in the most accurate and efficient way possible just like you were loading up tension on a spring to the perfect level. Let's just quickly find Keegan from Mediapolis, Iowa, which is there. So that's how you can get the tension in your cue arm right, and it'll make you a lot better player, no matter how good your technique is already. But if you are trying to improve other elements of your technique, have a look at these two videos or visit the website to see the rocket method. And remember, don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel. See you later.